Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to discuss something which is very interesting to know because in Big Data world we all are using Spark in some way or the other and today I'm going to deep dive into how Spark internally works. That means when we write a program, how does Spark create the DAG, the logical or the physical execution plan? What should we keep in mind when we are writing Spark programs? That answer we will get when we look at how Spark actually translates our program into a DAG and a plan. So let's get started. I'll take a very simple example and then uh, walk you guys through how Spark will render that program and actually uh, prepare a DAG or a plan. So let's take a problem statement where let's say we want to find out distinct cities based on the first letter. So these are like some city names that I have taken and if I want to write a program which will just look at the first letter, if it is D, it is going to group those together and tell me how many cities uh, were in, uh, in port which were starting with D, which were starting with B and P. So typically the output look, would look like as D is 2, B is 1 and P is 3. So this is a very simple example because we want to look at each and every uh, line of the program and see how Spark is interpreting that. So first step would be that whatever program we write, this is a sample program, a very basic one where we are reading a file. We are creating a map where we are just taking the first letter of that city name. So if it is Delhi, we are taking D. Then we are doing a group by because we want to collect all the city names which are starting with one particular letter. And then what we are doing is we are deduplicating, we are taking those uh, map values and then collecting them. So it's a simple program with five lines. But essentially what is going to happen is when Spark looks at this program, it is going to create something like these. These will be the five steps or that is how the RDD would be created, which is the lowest abstraction in Spark. So first of all, when the file is read, it will create a RDD for Hadoop. Then the map will be executed, then group by key, then map values. And in the end, collect will be executed, which will give us the output. So this is the very first step. Now let us look at how the execution would happen because these are the five steps that I have written in my program, but actual execution, how it will happen. Now, ideally, what I need to do is I need to read the file and the file has the file is in, let's say, HDFS. The file has the name of the cities. So the first operation, what it does is it reads the file. It picks up the first line, which is Delhi. The second operation that I'm doing is I am trying to take the character which is at the first location which is D then uh, I will do it again for the next city then for the next and then for the next so it is an iterative process for every city name in the file I am doing the same operation I am picking up the first character uh, of that city now if we look at an actual scenario where the file is of terabytes size or petabyte size it is not efficient to read one one line and do this operation it is better to club both of these operations together that will be more efficient similarly once we do this step the next step is to actually group by the keys so we are grouping by the keys to get the output saying that okay i'm grouping by d by b and p these are the keys and then I'm counting how many elements do I have in each of these buckets. And the last step is to collect it. So these three steps, if they are done together, they would make more sense. So that is why what a Spark program does is it groups the steps. Whichever steps make sense to be performed together, it groups those sets together. And that is known as a stage in Spark. It is also sometimes called as pipeline, which means grouping of steps which should be performed as one logical unit rather than doing each of the operations independent of each other. And ideally, which steps can be grouped together where we know that whatever partition the Spark job is operating on, that is sufficient for those group of steps. We don't need to depend on any other data. That is when you will group steps into one logical unit which is called as stage or which can be called as a pipeline. So what is typically a stage? In Spark, stage is nothing but a set of operations we want to do together. 
so anything any operation which is uh, bound to happen together or which is better to club together and do it as a set that is known as stage one stage can have multiple tasks so in a in a spark program there will always be a spark job that we write the job can have multiple stages each stage can have multiple task now stage division is done by spark based upon what we have written in the program and what makes sense to execute or operate as one unit and that is the reason we talk about lazy loading in spark which means spark does not prepare the plan until an action is encountered or until it goes through all the transformations because when spark goes through all the transformations it knows which transformations would make sense to uh, be organized as one stage that will make the entire performance of the program very very uh, good and we'll see how right so this is a stage now if we look at the same program how spark will arrange, arrange into stages is spark will club these two operations because it is easier to operate on the data uh, together with these two operations rather than executing one one operation at a time and the second stage will be a, a combination of these three operations so that is how your stage would be divided okay and this is purely based on which operations uh, can be clubbed together so that we don't have to do a lot of shuffle across the network the whole aim of spark uh, making that plan is that the shuffle needs to be minimized because shuffles are the costliest operation that is why i am clubbing these two operations together so that they can operate on that same partition of data that was sent rather than going and referencing other data now the third level is after job and stage the third level is task the way we should look, look at task is data plus computation so task always operates on a partition of data whatever is my data size the it is divided into logical partitions or data partitions each task operates on a single partition so task is nothing but data plus computation now computation is what here so a stage like we saw a stage is a combination of multiple operations together that's the computation so one stage can have multiple tasks and each of those tasks will operate on different partitions of data but the computation is the same that is defined in the stage that's why task is nothing but it is operating on a partition of data and computation is whatever computations are clubbed into that stage to which the task belongs each of the task are independent meaning if a stage has 10 task each of those task will operate on a different set of data but the operations will be exactly same because the stage has whatever operations two or three those are the same operations each task will execute in parallel and they will be independent of each other now one important thing to understand is task can run in parallel to each other because they are independent they are operating on different partition of data but the operations are exactly the same whatever it is there in the stage but at some point of time it is not necessary that if a stage has 10 task all 10 are running in parallel because that purely depends on how much uh, free how many free executors or cores do we have to operate but essentially task can run in parallel based on the availability of resources let us have a better look at how it is happening actually at the network level so let us say that we have these three nodes for simplicity stay uh, say let's just take three nodes in a cluster what will happen is there is a task which will be allocated to this node and let us assume that each of these node has one executor we are making it simple ideally one node can have multiple executors running but let's say one executor is running on each of these nodes so we have three nodes three executors running and what will happen is the data will be partitioned there will be one task running on and let's say these executors have one one core each dedicated to them so this task is running on the first node second task will go to the second node and third task has gone to the third node okay in ideal world we may have multiple executor multiple task running on one node but here we are just looking at a simple example to understand it better 
so we have each of these three tasks running and if let's say i had four tasks to be executed for my stage one we saw in our program that there are two stages stage one and stage two right these two stages will be pipelined which means one stage is a group of operations that will first finish and then the second stage would start so the stages are sequentially pipelined but within stages the task can run in parallel on different sets of data that is why if there are four tasks to be run as a part of stage one what will happen is since there are only three nodes and three executors available three tasks will run the moment and when these tasks are assigned the principle of locality is kept in mind so the driver is the coordinator who is assigning task to the executors the driver keeps in mind where is the data present if the data is present on node one for the task the task will go to node one we may have multiple executors in the cluster but it, the locality principle is always kept in mind to avoid any kind of shuffles that's why the task will run the moment one of them finishes then the fourth task will start because we did not have resources the fourth was waiting after all of these four tasks are completed then only we say that our stage one has completed so all the tasks within a particular stage need to complete before going to the second stage after this what will happen is there will be a shuffling that is needed if at all there is a shuffling needed for the stage 2 like in our case there was a group by the first operation of stage 2 was a group by so definitely if we have to group there is a shuffle involved we cannot avoid that so that shuffle will happen across the network and then the tasks for the stage 2 will start operating again stage 2 has three operations as we saw the group by the map value and the collect so these three operations are grouped together as stage 2 and let's say we have four tasks similarly we will start executing when these three finish the fourth will come and then the stage 2 completes so stage stages are pipelined sequentially and within stage tasks are operating parallelly now let us look at the hierarchy summary of whatever i spoke till now so at the highest level we have job job is nothing but the spark program that i wrote which was what finding out uh, which cities start with the first letter like whatever is the common letter we group them together so that's my job stage is what stage is a group of operations which are independent of any other data so it is i spark organizes stage in such a way that it operates only on the partition that it is allocated and it doesn't have to depend on any other data so the stages are identified by grouping operations each of these stages can have multiple tasks and these tasks are operating on partitions of data so every task is independent of the other it can run in parallel it is operating on a partition particular partition of data and all of this is getting coordinated by the driver driver is doing all the allocation of giving tasks to executors collecting the status etc so this is in a nutshell how a spark program internally would work what all do we when we talk about stage job cluster task what do we mean it is very very important to understand this so that we can write better programs i hope this summarizes the whole concept of how each of these components of spark work Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to get more interesting videos. Thank you so much.